Hi, my name is Mani Ali Khani. I am Dean and Professor at Citro Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citro Channel. Today, we continue the discussion on biology of tooth movement, focusing on another theory developed by Citro team called saturation point. <music> If you remember from last session, we said that the tooth movement occurs in two overlapping phase. One is called catabolic phase and one is called anabolic phase. The cells that participating in catabolic phase are osteoclast and the cells that participating on anabolic phase are osteoblast. Which one of these phase plays an important role in controlling the rate of tooth movement? Yes, I think you guessed right. It should be the osteoclast because they are the one that resorbing the bone in the direction of tooth movement. The osteoblast plays a significant role, but not in the rate of tooth movement, but keeping the integrity of the structure while the tooth movement occurs. The second question that passed through our mind is, can we increase the rate of tooth movement by increasing the magnitude of the force? In the universe around us, we have a very clear experience. If you're increasing the magnitude of the force, the rate of movement increases, as actually become the foundation of the Newton's second law. But in clinical experience, is that correct? Can we, by increasing the magnitude of the force, increase the rate of tooth movement? Let's do an experiment. Let's grab a group of animals and expose them to a different magnitude of the force. In these experiments, we applied force to first molar of the maxillary of the rats at different magnitude from 3 centinewton to 100 centinewton. What happened to the magnitude of the tooth movement? If you look at the CT scan of these animals after 28 days, we notice as we are increasing the magnitude of the force, the magnitude of the movement also increases. However, when we reach to about 25 centinewton force and above, we do not see increase in magnitude of the movement in response to increase in magnitude of the force. That stimulates us to go to the next step and investigate the histological sections from these teeth to see what happens. We look at the number of osteoclasts. As you can see, as we are increasing the magnitude of the force, the number of the osteoclasts start to increase. However, when we are reaching to the 25 centinewton force and above, it seems the number of osteoclasts does not increase more. Do you remember from the first session, we talked that in response to the force, inflammatory markers are released and those are the ones that act to bring the precursor of osteoclasts to the area and we have activation of catabolic phase. So therefore, it's logical to ask this question by increasing the magnitude of the force the magnitude of inflammatory markers should increase. Let's do that experiment together. In this series of animals, again, we are applying different magnitude of the force. And this time, instead of looking at the movement or number of osteoclasts, we look at the expression of inflammatory markers. Interesting enough, in response to application of 3 centinewton, 10 centinewton, until 25 centinewton, the inflammatory markers increases. However, after 25 centinewton, similar to what we observed on the magnitude of the tooth movement and on the number of osteoclasts, there is no increase in the level of the inflammatory markers. This brought the CTOR team to propose a theory that there is a saturation of biological response in response to application of orthodontic forces. Based on this theory, as we are increasing the forces, the biological response is increases. However, it reached to the point that after that, increasing the force does not stimulate more biological response. In another word, we reach to the point that the rate of tooth movement does not increase more. After that point, application of higher magnitude of forces is actually useless. But why this happens? At the start, when we are applying a low level of forces, the osteoclast appears in the pedial. The pedial is still under pressure, but the cells there are still alive. And that, that allows the osteoclast from the pedial side 
to start to resolve the bone in direction of tooth movement. This process is called frontal resorption. However, as we reach to the uh, high level of magnitude of the forces, the area of the petal become necrotic. There is no alive cells there. Now, the osteoclasts to resorb the bone, they need to come from adjacent structure, for example, the bone marrow side. That is called undermining resorption. Increasing the magnitude of the force cannot increase the rate of undermining resorption. And you reach to the point that is called saturation point. I hope you enjoyed this session of CTOR channel. Uh, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.